if you aim to get into the product team of your organization or if you're currently in the product team in your organization then a big part of your daily job is to communicate with your engineering team and in order to communicate well you need to know the basics of technology to ensure that you're not lost and you understand what the engineering team says keeping that in mind we are starting a new series here today where i'll be uncovering the most important technical concepts that you need to know as a pm so that one you can ace your interviews and also work really well with your engineering team so the first topic on our list is what is called as an api you may have heard about the term api somewhere if you're someone who comes from a computer science background or if you're a software engineer before then you probably already know what this is but my guess is that if you're watching this particular video then you're not from a computer science background or you're not from a tech background and you don't know what an api is possibly you've heard about it but then it's very confusing to you so let's begin with a basic definition of what an api is an api essentially stands for application programming interface in a very simple sense you can understand that in order for two systems to communicate with each other system a and system b they can only communicate using an api if system a wants certain resources or wants something from system b then it can just ask system b for it and system b will then perform those calculations and then give that response back to system a so in order for two people to communicate you need an api that's a very basic definition of what an api is let's look at an analogy from real life let's say you go to a restaurant and in that restaurant you go take a seat at the table and then you request the waiter to come and take your food order now the waiter comes with the menu and they hand over the menu to you now you take a look at the menu you see that certain dishes are typed or are mentioned in a certain way for example pizza is typed as parmesan cheese pizza it's not simply margarita or cheese you've got some type of pasta in there as well so you've got a lot of those things and they are mentioned in a certain way it's not just pasta or it's not just pizza and along with that you see the price now in order for you to place an order or place a request to the restaurant or to the waiter you have to mention specifically what is the exact dish that you want and you have to mention it in the exact way that it is mentioned on the menu if on the menu it actually says parmesan cheese pizza you can't just say cheese pizza or you can't just say pizza you have to mention the full words which is parmesan cheese pizza if you don't do that then the waiter is not really going to understand what your order is now along with this you should also mention the quantity of that particular dish that you want because without that information then your order is there's no point in the order essentially so you mention the dish exactly the way it's specified on the menu and then you mention the quantity and the waiter takes your order goes back to the kitchen works with the chef and they do something in the background they prepare the dish and then they get it back to you via the waiter so essentially what happened here was that you gave a request and you had to follow a certain set of rules in order to give your request you had to say the dish name in the exact way it's mentioned on the menu you couldn't say it any other way and you had to specify the quantity which was a mandatory parameter that you had to give in order for your request to be a successful request now you mention your request in such a way and in return you get the response which is in the ideal case the dish now in this case the api is essentially the combination of the waiter and the menu both of them together form the conduit for the request to go from system a in this case which is you the customer to system b which is the kitchen or the chef or the restaurant and then get the response back from system b to system a which is you again now you might be wondering why can't i do the communication myself why do i need an api in place a simple reason for that could just be that maybe you don't know how to communicate with the other system in the case of the restaurant you don't really know how to communicate if you don't have the menu in place you can't just go and say hey i want a pizza the chef is not going to understand what that means they need more details from that so which is why you need some form of communication layer to help you or help the two systems communicate the other reason could just simply be that you're not allowed inside the other system so this is a very good analogy to look at but one thing to note is that any analogy is not 100% accurate it's just a very easy way for us to grasp the complex concept and make it easier for us to understand now the next question is where do we see such apis now for this i want to take you through an example let's say you're an avid peter parker fan and you want to go watch the latest spider man movie that's just released assuming that you're going to be booking this show online let's say you open the book my show app once you open the book my show app the first thing that you'll be asked to provide is the location now this is essentially your request and one of the parameters in your request that you're providing is the location now based on the location that you provide you're going to be shown the home page the moment you gave your location it was actually an api that was at work to fetch you the home page to fetch you the latest list of movies that are running in your city today 
Now that was an API. It took the request of a location and it provided you with the movies that are running today in your city. Now let's say you go to the next step. Let's say you want to search for a movie or you want to select a movie. So let's say you select Spider-Man. So now you're going to press book ticket. Now when you press book ticket, it's going to ask you for a bunch of more details. It will first ask you what kind of theater you want to watch it in. Did you want to watch it in an IMAX 3D, 2D, 3D, whatever it is. And then you select that. Once you select that, you'll now be shown all of the theaters that are around you or that are in your city, which have, I would say, shows that are running today and those that are not, say, fully booked. Now, this again is an API at work. It takes in the details, it takes in your location, it takes in the movie that you want to watch, it takes in the type of theater you want to watch, and then gets you the list of theaters with the open timings. Now, you select a date and a certain timing, and then you go to the next step. So the next step, you're going to be asked, how many seats do you want to book? Let's say you select two. Now, once you've selected that, then comes another step. Now here, what happens is that you are now shown the list of empty seats within that particular theater, the seats essentially that you can book. Now here again, this is an API at work. It took all of the details. It took your location. It took the movie that you want to watch. It took the theater you want to watch it in. It took the time of the show. It took the, you know, the type of theater you want to watch. It took the date. And it is now telling you what are the list of empty seats or booked seats. Now this response, it's essentially in a format called as a JSON format that looks something similar to this. But you don't have to worry too much about it. Just note that this is a very common format that API responses are usually in. Now this response is then translated to the UI through the magic of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now again, that's something that you don't need to worry too much about. You just have to understand that this response that is look, that, that looks like this is then translated to what you see on the screen. Now finally, you then book that particular order and then you're on your way to watch your latest Spider-Man show. So now let's see how a sample request and response looks like for real world API. Fair warning to everybody before we proceed. This part might get a little technical. So if you don't have a computer science background, if you haven't really worked with code before, it will be a little tricky for you to understand. But I suggest you don't really worry too much about it. You can always go through the video once more if you'd like. Or if you have any questions, just put them down in the comments and then I'll answer them for you. So here we have a Google Maps API. Now, all of you might have definitely used Google Maps and it's kind of become a staple in our lives. And so this specific API that we're looking at, it's called the Places API. It's one of the APIs in Google Maps. It says here that the Places API returns information about places using a certain type of request. Now, this isn't very understandable by itself. So let me try and go deep into this. It says below there are different types of requests that I can make. Now, let me take one particular request, the first one that there is, which is Place Search. Now, it says here that Place Search request allows you to search for places using a variety of categories, including establishments, prominent places of interest and geographic location. It's still not very understandable, but what I can kind of get from this is essentially that I think you give a request to find a place and then it kind of gets you back that place. But let's kind of go a little bit further and see what else they've mentioned. Now, one thing that they've mentioned here is that there are three types of endpoints. Now, what is an endpoint? Now, an endpoint is essentially the way you can visualize an endpoint is by thinking that you are trying to enter a certain house. Now, the API is essentially, let's say, the door of the house, right? You need to enter that particular door. Now, once you enter the door, you're going to have different, let's say, needs or different requirements. You might want to eat food. And in order for you to eat food, you have to enter the kitchen. You have to go through the kitchen door, enter the kitchen and do some stuff there, prepare the food and then eat it. If you want to say, go to sleep, you need to go to the bedroom. Now, if you go to the bedroom, then you have to access the bedroom door. And that's how you get to the bedroom. Based on the different needs or requirements that you have, you have to access different doors though each of the door is within the house. So similar to that, right? an API is something that is the main door of the house and then an endpoint are the, you can say the sub doors inside the house that give you access to a particular room. And so anytime you want, say a different need, even though it's within the same house, you go to a different door. And that's the same case with the endpoints as well. So let's see a few endpoints that we have here. The first endpoint that we can take, which is a very simple one, is the text search endpoint. Now let's see what text search endpoint really does to us. It says here that the text search endpoint returns a list of places based on a certain text that we enter. For example, pizza in New York or shoe stores near Ottawa or 123 Main Street. Now in Google Maps, when you open the application, you would have definitely typed out these keywords, something like I want to see ATMs near me, I want restaurants near me. So I'm guessing this is that exact API which kind of gets you the results of that particular search. So let's see how it works. So let's first start with how the URL of that API looks like. Now, what is a URL of an API, right? Very similar to what you have scenario where you need a URL 
to type on your browser to access a certain web page. You also need a URL to access a certain API. Now, if you take a look at it here, we see that the URL is maps.googleapis.com slash maps slash API slash place slash text search slash output question mark parameters. Now, what do all of these mean? Now, the first thing to note is there is something called as a base URL. Now, the base URL essentially is like the door of your house. You can call it, say, the door number. That is your base URL. Now, your base URL here is going to be until text search. The next thing, your text search, this keyword is essentially your endpoint. Now, you can replace this with another endpoint. We saw three endpoints there. We can replace this with another endpoint. And then the next one, which is called output. Now, here for the request that you give, you have to define how you want the output to look like. Now, a very common way, like I said, is the JSON format. And so you just have to mention JSON over here. The next one is parameters. Now, parameters is essentially given you're asking for something, given you're requesting for something, what do you want in return? What are those fields you want to actually see in return? Now that you have to put it in the parameters section. So let's see how a sample request is gonna look like. So we're able to scroll down and we see this one basic example that they've given. It says here that the following example shows you the restaurants near Sydney. Okay, now as you can see, you see the base URL and then you see the endpoint and then you see the output, which is JSON. Then you see the query. Now query is some form of parameter that we need to provide for this endpoint, which would be documented somewhere. So we have to say that the query equal to restaurants near Sydney. Now you don't have to worry so much about the percentage 20 sign or symbol that appears there. It's just a basic way to encode or help the computer better understand a space. So it's just in place of a space. That's all it is. So you have your query and then the next thing you have is something called an API key. Now an API key in a very simple sense, if you want to access your door, you need a key. Without the key, you can't open the door. You can't access the API without a key. So you need to have a key to open the door. So that's your API key. So now with this request, let's see how the response looks like. So here's a response for the exact request that we placed. We see a bunch of things all in this format, like I said, the JSON format. Let's just try and see what is there in this JSON format. The first, it tells me the business status, which I think is when it says operational, I, I'm assuming that that particular place is operational. And the next thing it tells me is the formatted address, which is the exact address of this particular location. Then it tells me the geographic coordinates. And then it gives me a bunch of information. It tells me the name more importantly, and it says here restaurant Hubert. Okay, so that's restaurant Hubert. Then it tells me, is it open now? And it says false, which means it's not open at this particular point as I'm making this particular video. It then gives me a bunch of other information. Finally, it gives me the total rating for this place. And then it also tells me the, all the people who have given a rating for this particular place. Now we saw here, this was restaurant Hubert. Now, usually when you, when you type in a certain request like this in the actual Google Maps uh, app, you would get multiple, say, restaurants. You just simply type in restaurants near your, whatever your location is, and you'd get multiple restaurants. And so in a JSON format, you get multiple, again, you get multiple restaurants. So now let's see the next restaurant in this um, in this JSON output that we got. We see the business status. It says it's closed temporarily. We then see the address. Then we see a bunch of other information. And then we see the name. Now this name is Aria Restaurant Sydney. Okay. So then again, similarly, we see some more information. We see some photos and then we see the rating of this place. And finally, we see the total number of people who have rated this particular restaurant. Now I'm going to show you exactly how this looks like if i type this particular query on google maps so here i have the google maps app open in front of me i'm entering the keywords restaurants near sydney and i get a bunch of different restaurants now let me try and figure out if i can get the, the two restaurants that we saw one was restaurant hubert and then the other was aria restaurant sydney so here it is here is restaurant hubert and let's say i click on this and then i get the exact response which is i get the photos which was already provided as a json response i get the address which is the same as what came out to the json response i then see the uh, rating and then i see the total number of people who have uh, rated this particular place and now let me see if i can find aria restaurant sydney so if i scroll down a little bit further and i do a bit of searching i again find aria restaurant sydney which is awesome if i click on aria restaurant sydney i then again see the same things i see the list of photos i see the address i see the rating and then the total list of people who have given ratings for this particular restaurant now that's essentially how the google maps api works every time you enter a search query on the particular app you're essentially asking an api you're giving a request to the api and you get a certain response back. Now this request is, a, is in a format that you can't really understand really well. It's in this URL format. You and I as common people are not going to be writing URLs each time we want to say search for ATMs near us. We're not gonna do that, which is why the system understands all of that and then does that for you. 
Now the response that comes back, it again comes back in a very raw format. Now this response is then translated to the UI through the magic of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now one thing to note is that if you look at the response, you also get something called as a status. Now a status is essentially telling you how the response is. There are multiple statuses that you could have. The most common ones being status OK or code 200. 200 essentially means everything went fine and here is your response back. Status 400 means that it was a bad request, that the request could not be understood. Now let's say you're in a restaurant and then you just mentioned the name of the dish you want without the quantity. Now in this case, the waiter, the chef, the kitchen, they're not going to understand what it is that you want. So they're going to give you a 400 error and then they're going to say, hey, that's a bad request. Now if it's a 500 error, then this means that for some reason your request was good, but then for some reason the dish could not be prepared. Maybe we ran out of electricity or maybe the items were not there, so they couldn't prepare the dish for you. Now a 503 error essentially means that the kitchen or the restaurant was unserviceable or unavailable to take on any orders at this point. Maybe you landed at the restaurant at say 12 in the midnight and the restaurant was already closed and you're trying to place a request but then the restaurant's closed. So that's when the restaurant is going to give you a 503 error. The other thing to also keep in mind is there is this term called as payload. Now a payload is essentially another name for the response or is essentially the data that you receive. And so you'd see the terms response, payload, data being used interchangeably. Now the last thing to look at is what are get and post requests. So within request itself, there is something called a get and a post request. Now so far we've always seen get requests. Get as in get me a list of things from a particular system. Now each time we saw, let's say in the example of booking a movie ticket, you wanted the system to get you the list of open seats in the particular theater based on your requirements. Now, again, similarly in the Google Maps API, when we were saying, I want the list of restaurants near me, it was again a get request, get me the list of restaurants that are near me. But there's something also called as a post request. Now a post request, essentially you can understand it this way. So anytime you don't want to get something, but you want to put something in a certain system, this is when you use something called as a post request. In a very simple sense, you can think that this is you trying to say, post a photo on Facebook or Instagram, or post a comment or you know like a particular post. So each time you're trying to do that, you're not trying to get something in return, but then you're just trying to post something there. You're trying to push something to the other system. So that's essentially the difference between get and post requests. So that concludes the short primer on what APIs are. We looked at a whole bunch of things. We looked at the example of the restaurant. We saw what the definition of an API is. We saw how it kind of works. We then saw how it looks like in real life. We took an example of the Book My Show app, and then we saw how the API is looking like there. Then we even saw how the API truly looks like. How does that URL look like? We saw what is a base URL. We saw what is an endpoint. We saw what is the output. We saw what is JSON. We saw what are parameters. And then we saw how to read an API response. Lastly, we also saw what is a payload and we also saw what is meant by a get and a post request. Now that's a lot. And to tell you the truth, that is a lot of information for you to grasp in just this 10 to 15 minute video. So I'm sure you might possibly want to maybe revisit this video multiple times or you might have questions. So do feel free to put them down in the comments and I'll make sure I get them answered to you. So hope this was helpful and until the next video, bye-bye.